our next course in the first semester is called machine learning. Again, in this course, we will first start with classification techniques. Within classification techniques, we will start with the simplest of all, which is k nearest neighbors. And we will start with a simple KNN and we'll graduate all the way up to state of the art ensemble techniques. In between, we will learn all the popular and widely used techniques, whether it is logistic regression, whether it is support vector machines, whether it is decision trees, random forests, gradient boosted machines, all of that we will learn. Again, when we cover any technique or any classification algorithm, we will go full in depth in the math. We will understand the underlying math very thoroughly. We will understand a lot of special cases where each technique will work well and where techniques will fail and how to recover if a technique fails and how to understand a technique is failing in the first place, right? Again, we will also try to cover each of these techniques in the context of real world examples. Whenever we take an example, we will see why some of the earlier learned techniques cannot work in that situation and how we can improve the solution using more advanced techniques like ensembles. Again, throughout this whole course, for every technique we study, we will write code. Again, I'll talk to you about what type of libraries we will use in just a couple of minutes. But we will, any technique, whether it's KNN or a gradient boosted machine or any other technique that we study, we will understand in-depth math, in-depth code and in-depth applicative details. All three are very, very important to be able to actually solve real world problems in machine learning using techniques we learn in this course. Then we will also touch upon regression techniques, right? Very similar to classification techniques. There are slight differences that we will touch upon. Again, even regression methods, we will start with basic linear regression. We will also see how you can do regression using k nearest neighbors. And of course, we will see how you can use even ensemble methods for regression itself. Again, just like in the case of classification, we'll go full depth into the mathematics. Because understanding the mathematical details, understanding where a technique will work by justifying the, with the underlying mathematics is very important. And understanding how to change the underlying mathematics for a given real world problem, right? Again, we'll go full in depth, both in terms of mathematics and code, even for our regression methods. But as usual, we will have some real world problems. We'll see why some older techniques, some classical techniques might not work. How more advanced techniques like, like ensembles could perform better there. Again, we'll try to motivate all of this using lot of graphs and plots, using lot of visualization. Cool. Next, we'll touch upon clustering methods. Again, we will touch upon the basic clustering methods like k-means, like uh, hierarchical clustering. Also, we'll study some clustering methods from the database community like dbscan, etc. Again, all of this will be in the context of real world problems. We will understand all the underlying mathematics, the computer science concepts, and most importantly, the code, right? So in, the, in this course itself, we will cover multiple case studies. For each case study, where we'll apply, whether it's a classification, whether we'll apply, whether it's a classification algorithm or a regression algorithm or a, or a clustering technique, we will first start with a real world problem. We will use real world data sets. We'll analyze the problem. We'll do all the data analysis for these problems, understand what we want to solve. We will go full, full in depth in math and code. And we will do thorough analysis and whole modeling exercise itself. We will try and solve multiple case studies in this course itself. Now coming to coding itself, we will use a lot of popular libraries. We will start with scikit-learn for classical machine learning techniques. We'll also use XGBoost and CatBoost for all boosting based methods. But if you have large data, if you're operating on a big data environment, we will also study how you can use Spark MLlib, which is a very popular machine learning library built on a big data distributed system called Spark. So we'll also study how you can use Spark MLlib's internal implementation to train some of these machine learning models in a big data environment. Equally importantly, we'll also implement, if not all, some of these core classification, regression, and clustering techniques from scratch. We'll also have some, some algorithms that we will implement in a multi-core setting because we learned about multi-threading and multi-processing in Python, right? So we'll use some of those techniques here. Again, understanding all these three coding aspects is very important. One is if you're doing it on a simple, simple single box environment. One, if you're operating in a big data environment. One, if you have to implement it from scratch yourself, how do you do it, right? Again, this implementing from scratch 
will help you get a deeper understanding of how the algorithm works internally, the underlying mathematics behind it. So we will do all of this as part of this course called machine learning.